Chapter 21. On the rare days it was warm enough. Alan and I went to the promenade to spy on the boys, desperate to be noticed, not to be left behind. As we sat eating ice creams on the edge with our legs dangling through the metal rail, noise and cigarette smoke drifted up from the beach where people rested their backs against the concrete wall below us. The tide always seemed to be out, the sea a thin blue line blending into the sky. Sometimes it was so far away you could hardly hear it, a faint hiss behind the voices and shouts. Where the sand had flattened, children paddled in the shallow water and, with my glasses on, I could make out the black dots of swimmers. A few days after he'd watched her sunbathing on the school field, I saw Sam and Vicky. Even from that far away, I knew it was them. Like looking at a silent film through the wrong end of a telescope. The blonde flip of her ponytail, his long brown legs with trousers rolled up above his knees. He was showing off, cartwheeling along the water's edge. Then a handstand that went on and on. I know. Have you got any money left? Anne ran over to a free set of binoculars. I crammed in my coins, and there they were, in close-up. I wished I could lip-read, but I didn't need to. I knew what Vicky wanted. That look. Her voice teasing me. Scaredy cat. My turn. Anne took the binoculars. I can't believe it. He's letting her kiss him. Let me see. Against the blue of the sea, Vicky's hand was a white starfish climbing up his brown leg. Then it disappeared under the flapping sail of his school shirt. There was an acid burn of chocolate and ice cream in my throat. I watched until the money ran out and it went dark. My hand smelt of ice cream and the metal railings. Like a child. From then on, they were inseparable.